The RX 6600 XT is probably one of the best cards when it was released during the mining boom. However, it was quickly overshadowed by its successor, the RX 6650 XT. In 2024, it's very hard to find this card in a new market, although you can find this in the used market or maybe even AliExpress. So if you do find one, is this card actually good? Let's run this card in our fast-paced shooters and see if this is still good in 2024. And to make things interesting, Let's check the RTX 4060 in there as well. Okay, let's go. As always, we're putting this card on our Ryzen 5800X3D rig with updated drivers. All games were run multiple times before we started recording. And we are using an external PC to record, so there's no performance loss in all these benchmarks. Okay, let's start with our first game, Warzone. If you've been following the channel, you would have known that AMD cards usually have issues with Warzone. However, this time around with its latest drivers, 24.5.1, I think they may have fixed that. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison between the RX 6600 XT's 1080p native and 1440p with FSR 3 turned on. There certainly is a big difference between the two, at least about 1 to 2 milliseconds difference in frame times, which is very significant on competitive gaming, so that's about 50 FPS on frame rates. Frame times are stable on both scenarios. The RX 6600 XT can play at 1440p with FSR 3 turned on, but to gain the most advantage, let's stick with 1080p on this one. Here we have the RX 6600 XT against Nvidia's modern entry-level card, the 4060. And right off the bat, you can see that the 6600 XT is leading on raw average FPS here. However, the 4060 is really close behind on the lows. In our test, the 6600 XT does use more VRAM system memory and maybe slightly more power however it's no denying that the 6600 XT is the winner here although it's a little bit of a you know just a small gap. I'm glad that AMD has finally addressed the issues we previously raised with a heavy stuttering in Uzbekistan. On an actual game the 6600 XT is pretty decent. We have around 170 FPS with our GPU maxed out. Frame time seems to have some micro stutters at the start of the game and hence why we have like about 81 FPS on our 1% lows here. However, as you go through the game and you move in closer and closer to the final round, it does get generally better. We didn't turn on anti-lag here as it didn't really have any effect when we tested it. Overall, the gaming experience in Warzone with the 6600 XT is generally okay. Next game is Helldivers 2, where we continue to fight for managed democracy. Let's first have a quick look on both native 1080p and an ultra quality upscaled render with the RX 6600 XT. And look at that, we are getting about 90 FPS native, while there's a sizable lead here with the upscaled resolution. However, we know that having an upscaled render scale will have worse video quality in this game, so let's just stick with the native 1080p. This is a PvE game anyway not a pvp okay here we have the rx 6600 xt versus the newer rtx 4060 and dang the 4060 is fighting back here it's getting around 10 more fps compared to the 6600 xt on our firing shots and our stratagem testings it's the same case the 4060 is still the better card compared to the amd one Meanwhile, on the field where we are swarmed by terminated bugs alongside a lot of graphical effects, our FPS does take a hit. Our frame rates drop to around 80 FPS and sometimes even goes lower. The good thing is that our frame times do remain consistent, but is very high at 12 to 13 milliseconds. Now, despite not as sweet as the other games in here, you will feel this. Like, you will feel this 12 to 13 milliseconds. If it's a bit slow for you, you might have to tweak this and maybe resort to that upscaled ultra quality render scale. And before we proceed boys, if you find our testing helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. Okay, let's move on to our favorite competitive building game, Fortnite, and as always, let's go through all our API starting with DX12. And in here, you can see that the RTX 4060 does have the advantage on overall FPS. However, we do see that on the middle part of the benchmark, the RX 6600 XT does take the 1% lows, especially when we have that car crashing. We have a bit of a headroom here with our GPUs as we haven't maxed out both cars. And speaking of power, there's a small gap between both cars, but that's pretty much negligible. Moving on to DX11, and this is where we can see that the RTX 4060 is pulling through. DX11 has always seemed to favor Nvidia cards in Fortnite. There's certainly a 
gap between both cats here. The average FPS and 1% lows do tend to go with the 4060 over the 6600 XT. However, you can see on the later part of this benchmark that the RX 6600 XT's 1% lows do pick up and yeah that's a good thing power consumption is much closer here compared to a dx12 next up is performance mode and it's just terrible here for the 6600 xt look at how huge the gap is between both cats around 100 fps difference between the two although lows are a bit closer the RX 6600 XT does seem to be power efficient here and this is probably because AMD still has that GPU clock speed dropping issue in performance mode. It's definitely not bad compared to the previous drivers but we're still seeing it here. So let's tweak this and manually tune our minimum clock speeds again for the RX 6600 XT. Here we have performance mode again with 2400 MHz minimum clock speeds on our RX 6600 XT and that's what i'm talking about look at that one percent lows boys amd is leading on that in now now although the 4060 still dominates the overall average fps i'd say the 6600 xt's performance here is definitely not bad and look at that it even uses less power than the 4060 amazing and to anyone that's curious, here's all three APIs with RX 6600 XT. Performance mode is definitely viable here and let's go hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, actual gameplay now, the RX 6600 XT is actually not bad in performance mode. We are getting really high FPS with pretty decent lows. We do get the occasional frame time spikes here which is pretty normal for Fortnite but this is not that concerning as compared to when we tested our RTX 3080 and that one was really bad. Look at that, we're pretty good just sipping a little bit of power here just below 100 watts and I'm pretty happy with this one. I really hope AMD will continue and push this through because they are headed in the right direction. Let's go for something lighter now, Valorant. This game heavily depends on our CPU and it seems to really like cash from our processor hence why we're getting pretty huge numbers here. Side by side comparison between both cards and we can see that the AMD card is picking up the average FPS gear and even the 1% lows. That's amazing. Let's go for some heavy action scenes and this is where AMD seems to lag behind. Look at that, the 0.1% lows just drop pretty hard as compared to our RT. The X4060. One thing to note though, the 6600 XT is once again using less power here, although we are not GPU bottleneck in this scenario. On our actual gameplay and icebox, we are getting pretty high frame rates here, more than 500 FPS inside and less than that outdoors. We do get the frame time spikes on the early rounds of Valorant, but this is expected. And on the later rounds, the frame times do become stable. Overall, this is a pretty good experience. I got no complaints here. It's pretty decent. Next up is PUBG and here we have the RX 6600 XT going head to head against the 4060 and the results are pretty close on lows however the 4060 does pull ahead on the overall FPS. Frame times on both cars do become stable after our rigorous testings. On our mortar scene however this is where Nvidia usually pulls ahead. In this case we have the 4060 showing the older AMD card why it's better for PUBG. Yes there's no denying that however if you factor the price of both cards I'd say the 6600 XT is definitely not bad considering what you're getting. On the actual battle royale game well we are very comfortable here at 200 fps with lows at 120. Frame times are relatively stable. We definitely are able to hit our shots here and I'd say this is an okay experience. There are areas where we do get GPU bottleneck and so our power does push to us the higher end at 135 watts. The RX 6600 XT is certainly not better than the 4060. However, I'd say that this card is decent in its own right. Moving back to our fast paced shooters, we have Apex Legends starting with our static scenes and we can see that the RX 6600 XT is likely a hit compared to our newer Nvidia card. The results are pretty close but the RX 6600 XT is a little bit better here than the 4060. Moving on to our firing shots and it seems like both cards are decent here. They are somewhat similar to each other hitting the maximum 300 FPS most of the time at 1080p. The 4060 may have slightly better 0.1% lows but this is pretty negligible. They're really close. Let's go for some heavy action scenes here and see which one is much more stable. The RX 6600 XT does start strong here as we are on this 
smoking areas but as soon as we move through the explosions we do see that the 4060 is showing better stability it's pretty negligible for casual players but you will feel this if you are a competitive player okay let's go for some real gameplay now and you can see that we do have frame rates at around 260 it's pretty stable with the lows as well at 165 we're maxing our gpu here and pulling around 120 watts even on scenes with smokes we're consistent here with the 6600 xt what i do note is that there are frame time spikes right after you start playing the game but as you progress this does disappear and everything else becomes stable three years later the rx 6600 xt is still a pretty decent card if you find one in a market that's reasonably priced, I definitely suggest that you pick that one up. The performance of the RX 6600 XC seems to be pretty good at the time of recording. And if you guys want to see all the full length benchmark runs, I've chucked all of that into our Patreon. You can sign up there and support our channel if you want to. To everyone else, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you guys on the next one.